discuss this further now with Marco Gassik from the British Serbian Alliance for Peace, who's joining us now from London. Now, um, some Serbs are saying these allegations have been public knowledge for years. So why do you think they haven't been investigated before? Well, I think they've been known about before. They don't, almost don't need investigating. But the key thing is, when, if we go back those uh, 11 years to when Serbia was being bombed, when people were being uh, butchered on bridges in uh, schools and hospitals and railway stations, where people were being killed in the name of a supposedly uh, good Albanian uh, leadership uh, that needed uh, protecting with its population, um, th those crimes that were committed against Serbians at that time were so huge that to admit that, in fact, the reality was that the Albanians uh, that the U.S. was sponsoring at the time were indeed organ uh, stealers, uh, sexual uh, and, and women enslavers and villains in a variety of different kinds would be to delegitimize one's own propaganda operation. So they couldn't go back from their original claims without admitting that they'd been lying all along, particularly in 1999. And that would have meant that uh, those who bombed Serbia were culpable in criminal terms for that bombing and should answer before an international court. So, of course, it would be very difficult for them to say, actually, yes, we are uh, indeed wrong, we were wrong, we uh, supported the wrong side, and, uh, and, and, uh, that, and that was one step too far for them. What? It took a man of great courage, which was uh, Dick Marty, to actually articulate what they'd been hiding. OK, so you're saying, uh, well, investigation is not necessary because it's all known, but surely uh, an investigation would be necessary now, but perhaps will it achieve anything if, indeed, the UN Security Council does carry out an investigation? Well, it... Uh, the question is who will carry out the investigation because everybody seems to be, as uh, Carla Del Ponte, the uh, former chief prosecutor, put it, rather too afraid of the Albanian reach, that's the reach of the extremist Albanian leaders, uh, to actually volunteer to investigate. There seems to be no body charged with the task of actually investigating Dick Marty's findings. So it will require a brave, uh, a brave Security Council and a committed Security Council, one that wants the truth to actually appear, and I have my doubts whether that will uh, appear out of the Security Council. Looking back at what happened, uh, one also surely should look forward. It was a, a terrible time, a tragedy for all involved. Now we're seeing a time of reparation in a way, where EU countries are sending billions now in aid to Kosovo. And surely now it's only a matter of time before Kosovo can actually stand on its own two feet, isn't it? The, it's, this will take a long time. And, and it's happening, is it not? Well, sending billions uh, of euros in aid to criminals and murderers and uh, drug runners, as, as far as I'm concerned, not a good policy. Those criminal networks are already standing on their own two feet, and they can uh, send aid, aid to the EU. The people who are on their knees are the Serbians there, and indeed the uh, uh, Albanians in general, who are among the poorest populations in Europe. The Serbians particularly have been targeted by all kinds of nationalist extremism there, but nobody's having a good time, and this is the uh, fake state that the US experiment has created. It's a one step towards a greater Albania, but this is actually greater poverty, greater evil, and greater instability for the whole world that's been created in Kosovo today. There is a chance that there could be some dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo. What do you think uh, you can expect from that? I think uh, we need to understand that Serbia, in that dialogue, uh, has to uh, have the position that it's trying to decide the future of its own sovereign territory, of which Kosovo is inalienably a part. Should uh, there be a temptation to legitimize the uh, criminal authorities in Pristina as in some way equal inter interlocutors, that will be really... Uh, legitimizing the criminals that really deserve to be behind bars rather than uh, in front of them. So uh, we need a committed uh, uh, position from Serbia because we need a proper discussion about a future for Serbians and Albanians that will solve, in a way, the problems of both through a mutually beneficial uh, agreement, not one that will be zero for the Serbians and, and uh, everything for the extremist Albanian criminal leaders in Pristina today. Well, let's talk about that future for Serbians. Now, Serbia has clearly made it uh, absolutely clear to everyone that he wants to join the EU. And uh, certainly there are hints of a softening of Belgrade's stance towards Kosovo. Uh, but what do Serbs care more about? Uh, let's hear it from you. I mean, do you care more about joining the EU or getting Kosovo back? 
I think intelligent Serbs understand that uh, if the price of joining a club is that you give part of your house uh, as the price of joining that club, if that's the price, it's not a price worth paying because it shows that your status in that club will not be the one that will be of benefit to you. Serbia has 500 years' worth of resources uh, in Kosovo. For 500 years coming up now, will, it be, will the EU be subsidising Serbia to actually sacrifice all those resources and be paying the people who ethnically cleanse the Serbia? from Kosovo for the resources of Serbia in Kosovo. The economic figures don't stand up. Serbia needs both. It does need EU membership, but it's not ready for it yet. But it certainly needs its Kosovo back, and it's certainly ready for that. All right, well, it's very interesting to hear what you have to say. Marko Gazic from the British-Serbian Alliance for Peace, thanks very much indeed for joining us live here on